Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful morning it is. It's still nice and cool. It's pre-dawn hours. I'm in a campground, so i got to keep my voice down because there's a lot of people still snoozing. But I'm actually camping in a meteorite impact structure. Or an astrobleam. There's not many places in the world you can do that, certainly not in the U.S. This is one of them. It's northern New Mexico, and I'm going to bet most people here in their campers and tents and so on don't even realize what they're camping in. How can they not know? How do you not realize you're in a giant crater? Let me grab some coffee, wake up a little bit more, and then meet me on the rocks, and I'll show you why I'm saying it's a crater. All right, that coffee really hit the spot, and on this nice, brisk 44-degree morning, I really needed it. We're going to transverse the impact structure from east to west, and if you come out here to check it out yourself, you're going to notice there are no signs, there's no road markers. So what I've done is at each stop, I'm providing a little inset map along with GPS coordinates, so you can come out here and check it out yourself. As we drive from the campground to our first stop, I thought I would cover some of the more interesting aspects you might not know about this crater, and in fact, there's not a lot of publicity about it out there. First is how it was discovered, and it was actually a retired oil company geologist named Thornton or Tim McElveen, and he was out walking around just for fun, one of those guys that did that. That sounds familiar. He retired in 1998 to France, and he visited the Rochechouart Impact Museum, which is dedicated to a meteorite crater there in France. Fast forward to 2003, and Tim is walking around outside of Santa Fe, just enjoying the geology, taking a look at some of the cool rocks. Lo and behold, he starts seeing shatter cones. At least that's what he thought they were. And after careful analysis, photography, measurements, and documentation, he solicited the opinions of experts and finally published them in 2005. They had escaped any attention or notice until that point, which is really kind of remarkable when you think about how many people have probably driven by him over the decades. And speaking of that, if you keep your eye on the left side of the road here, there it is. It's our first outcrop stop of the trip, so I'm going to pull over here safely and we'll take a look. You know, before we get too much further along, let's take a minute and talk about cross-sections of impact craters like this one. They truly are cataclysmic or earth-shattering events, and they happen in just a matter of seconds. They're surprisingly common on Earth's surface, but they're hard to recognize because a lot of them are heavily eroded, like the Vredefor Dome in South Africa, which is a two billion year old asteroid impact structure. These things have been studied and drilled by geologists and geophysicists for decades, so we actually know a lot about them. Now, the Santa Fe impact structure is heavily eroded, so most of the crater is gone, and that's what made it hard to recognize. But there are still features visible on the roadside that are gonna clue us in. We're gonna see things like faulting, brecciation, and most spectacularly, shatter cones as we transect the center of the crater. Our first stop is just off center of the middle of the crater, so we're gonna be seeing some faulting and deformation. Okay, so we're at our first stop, and you can see it's kind of a mixture of rocks in this outcrop. There's some kind of orange salmon-colored rocks on the top and some blacker material down the bottom. You see where it gets its name, Black Canyon. We're gonna take a look at this, though, and see if we can spot some features that might indicate a meteorite impact. So right off the bat, you get the sense that there's a lot going on with these outcrops. There's some big um, diagonal features in here that upper part, that upper kind of orangish tan material, looks like it's been kind of through the ringer. And this lower darker material, we're gonna take a look at this in a second, looks sort of deformed, looks kind of bent down, kinked up, squished around. So it doesn't look like there's discrete layering all the way through here. In fact, kind of looks like some of that material has been smashed down in and it's been kind of readjusted. So, it doesn't, doesn't give the impression of being a nice, quiet bunch of rocks. These rocks have been through some action. And that can happen in a variety of ways. That can happen through tectonics, it can happen through volcanics, and it can happen through impact structures. Oh boy. Yeah, take a look at that up there. Look at that schist. There's some heavy-duty deformation up in that. So these are schists. These are metamorphic shales, mudstones. You can still see the original bedding in there from when this was a mudstone deposit. Probably marine, because you get this nice laminated effect. But schist occurs when mudstone has been heavily metamorphosed. It's been 
baked at high pressure, high temperature, and the parting lineations develop these little minerals. You get micas, you get all kinds of interesting minerals depositing out. So this is a schist, but this is a granite. There's a lot of orthoclase feldspar. Um, that's that kind of pinkish salmon color. There's a bunch of quartz. Ooh, look at that shiny schist with all the micas on it. Biotite, muscovite mica. So we've got granite, and we've got metamorphosed mudstone schists. Now, we happen to know the age of this granite. It's 1.6 billion years old. And the schist is younger than that. But look at the granite. Look at the fractures and faulting in this granite. This damage is a direct record of the massive shock wave that resulted from the impact of the meteorite. These rocks were completely solid and therefore they behaved in a rigid or fragile manner as opposed to ductile and flexible, and the shock wave shattered them like glass. We're gonna see some more examples of damage from the shock wave at this next stop, which is stop two. And let me just emphasize that if you do come out here to take a look at the rocks on your own, please, 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 be careful, especially when it's tourist season, because there is a lot of traffic on this road. But not so much in the early mornings like it is right now, and the light is just about perfect to see some of these shatter cones and faults and fractures that we're about to look at. So we'll run across and check them out close up. After the massive scary trucks go by, of course. You might have seen the short I did on shatter cones, and it's actually taken from this very outcrop. And I outlined some of them just to make it a little bit more visible, because uh, they're not super obvious unless you know what you're looking at. But you can see in this, there are some really discrete conical structures with apical points that then kind of branch out and come down. They almost look like upside down carrots. And you just see cone after cone in here. It's almost fractal. And that's a result of the meteorite slamming down, creating tremendous force waves, shock waves that go blasting through the sedimentary cover and even the basement. And this is the basement, which reacted in a brittle manner. It's not very ductile. So this is the same effect as when a high velocity uh, missile, like a bullet or a BB hits a glass pane, and you get that kind of cone. It's basically the same idea. These only occur with nuclear explosions or bolides and creating astro blooms. So that's why we're pretty sure this structure is a result of a bolide impact. And now we're going to continue up the road a little bit and see what's down that way. So as we drive west towards our next stop and closer to Santa Fe, let's take a moment and talk about some more interesting facts about this heavily eroded meteorite impact structure. You know, to prepare research teams, astronauts, and unmanned rovers for examining craters on other planets, NASA has spent a lot of time really closely examining craters on Earth. And one of the most interesting and terrifying aspects of this research has been their calculation of the amount of damage that would be sustained if one of these ancient bolides hit Earth today. The meteorite that created the Santa Fe structure is estimated to have been about 6 to 13 kilometers wide. That's 4 to 8 miles wide. And when it plowed into the Earth, it created a fireball 54 times brighter than the sun that would have extended 50 kilometers away from the center in all directions. The heat blast alone lasted two and a half minutes. And if it happened today, trees and grasses would be incinerated up to 200 kilometers away from the center of the blast, while clothing would ignite and you'd get third degree burns up to 150 kilometers away. And you'd have to wait two and a half minutes for the shock wave to hit you which would result in a thousand mile an hour winds. And up to 300 kilometers away, it would be an air blast that would shatter windows and do structural damage. Thankfully, this all happened 320 million to 1 billion years ago. The age dates aren't that great because so much of the rock is missing, but there are studies underway to see if we can narrow down that time frame. With that explosive information in mind, let's take a quick drive up the road to look at ground zero, where this bolide struck and shattered the basement, creating some of the best shatter cones you're ever gonna see. Well, the sun has finally come up enough to really, really show off some of these rocks. Take a look at this outcrop behind me. There's some really awesome deformation, fractures, and all kinds of general chaos happening in this outcrop. The light really shows us off. I mean, unbelievably well. Take a look at the granite, tilted up. Look at the schist, smashed around all the form. But take a look at that. 
beautiful, beautiful shatter cones in this granite. I mean, these are textbook. These are what we're gonna go take a look at right now. You know, in some of my other videos about trace fossils and other features, I've talked about the importance of getting the right light to see features. It does not get better than this. Morning light shining down the outcrop at an oblique angle, but look at these shatter cones. No imagination required. Just striation after striation piled one on top of the other. These things are absolutely stunning. There's no question about what caused these. There's no question that these are genuine shatter cones. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. These are proof positive of an extraterrestrial impact or a nuclear explosion. Now we know there's no nuclear explosions happening back in the Precambrian or the Cambrian or Ordovician. So that leaves us with asteroid impact or meteorite impact. I shouldn't say asteroid, I should say meteorite or bolide. It's covering my bases. It just does not get better than this. So, you know, all the faulting, deformation, fractures, everything we saw up until now, you can argue was caused by tectonics. And, you know, geologists love to argue about interpretation. Could have been some sort of mountain building process or a volcano or something that caused it. When you see stuff like this, that's the end of the argument. And these are the features that if you're looking to prove positive that you've got a bolide impact of some kind, if you find these, you are set. So of course, people that are looking at controversial features like upheaval dome in Utah and other structures like that that may or may not be bolide impacts, they go crazy looking for things like this. But these are absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. These are textbook. In fact, if you're trying to compare what you think is a shatter cone to anything, these are the ones to do it with. It does not get better. This is the central part. We still have to get through the outer part where you see a lot more faulting and deformation, not spectacular stuff like this. Well, it's spectacular in its own way. We take advantage of the break and the traffic just to point out the incredible shake and bake relationship of the granite blocks and the schist. They've just been all kind of busted up, rolled around and redeposited probably in a millisecond when this thing hit shockwave went out smashed everything up jostled it left this in its wake i mean tremendous force is absolutely incredible to conceive of that and here it is i guarantee 99 percent, 99.9 percent of the cars going by and the people looking at it have no idea of the story of what happened here if you're watching this video though now you know there's no excuse it's getting pretty late in the morning because it's way easy to spend a lot of time checking out these rocks. I mean, they're just absolutely fascinating and beautiful. But we want to continue our traverse across this remnant impact structure. And stop four is going to take us just outside of the central zone. And we're going to see some fractures, uh, some deformation associated with that shock wave that came through. So not quite as many shatter cones, but we're still going to see some really great deformation features. We're not too far from the spectacular, spectacular shatter cone outcrop. And we're moving away from that central part of the impact structure into the faulted and deformed areas surrounding it. So let's take a look across the street after the cars go by and see what we see in the light. Wow, yeah, look at this. That is some major damage. Look at the contact of the schist the dark material on that granite, it's just all kinds of wonky, I think is the proper scientific term. You can see it's all just abused and reworked and tumbled, jumbled together. Look at this. You just picture that giant shock wave migrating through and jostling all this rock. Look at that, there's granite mixed in smashed into the schist. There's little veins of quartz or something going through. Wow. Okay. Let's get a closer look at this stuff over here. Yeah, look at that contact. I mean, that is really impressive. So the question is, is this granite like a breccia? Was that a chunk of granite rolled into the somewhat squishy schist and you're seeing a contact there was the whole thing kind of mushed up and 
squished together. Interesting. Look at this. Somebody's come through and taken a core sample, about a two inch, three inch core sample. Probably for age dating, the granite would be my guess, but I'm not sure. But even in the granite, look at this contact between the material down here and that up here. Wow. Yeah, that is really sharp contact. Just totally, totally smashed up. So here, away from dead center of the impact structure, we see a lot of evidence of major rocking and rolling in the rock. We're seeing it tumbled up, smashed up, shaken, baked up. All this can also occur in earthquake prone areas, fault zones, tectonic areas. So that's why if you only had this, there would be arguments from now until doomsday about what caused it. This is an area of extreme mountain building during the Paleozoic. So conceivably somebody would have pointed to this and said, well, it could have been because of tectonic uplift and mountain building. The fact that we've got those awesome, beautiful, I can't say enough about them, shatter cones just right up the road case closed we know what's causing this deformation it's not mountain building it's an extraterrestrial impact smashing into the planet again there's not a beautiful impact crater there's nothing you look at on google maps there's nothing you look at and see and say aha that is clearly an impact structure that's what made the discovery of this one so unique is that it took a geologist with an eye towards seeing these features these shatter cones and deformation features but especially the shatter cones seeing them saying, you know what, that looks like something I've seen at a definitive impact structure. Somehow these had escaped notice of everybody else that had been here, except for one eagle-eyed retired geologist out for a stroll. Just goes to show, watch enough videos, read enough cool papers, or visit enough museums, you never know what you're going to find out there in the world that everybody else has missed. You might be the one that finds the next great, awesome meteorite impact structure, or something else. Who can tell? The important thing is to get out and look at rocks. Don't just stay home and watch videos. Watch my videos, but also get out and look at some rocks. So let me go ahead and follow my own advice and get us to stop five, which is our final stop on this traverse across the remnant Santa Fe impact structure. When we stop, we're gonna take a look at some of the last good outcrop before we hit the outskirts of Santa Fe. There are some additional little scrappy outcrops and certainly you can go climbing around and find some more but these are the last of the really accessible roadside outcrops. Let me just again emphasize, please, please, please be careful if you stop along the road to look at these rocks. All right, our first outcrop is this really impressive looking spire of granite that's just shot up into the sky. And further down the road, there's even more interesting relationships between the rocks, like this big scoured out piece of granite that's jammed into the schist along that plain you can picture a low angle fault coming in and out of the plane of the outcrop. Crazy cross-cutting relationships of granite and schist. So did that get squirted in as a result of the impact? Or is that something related to tectonics? That is a good question. And I don't have the answer. You know, it's always nice just to stand back and look at an outcrop from afar and give it some final thought and reflection and just imagine what it must have been like when that bolide hit. This rock got all tortured, got shoved around, and it all happened in just a split second. I mean, it's really mind-blowing stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed this visit to the Santa Fe impact structure or what remains of it. You know, there's so many great things out there to explore. And right now I got to get back to spending some more quality time with these shatter cones because they are truly, truly spectacular. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the outcrop next time.